Joining us now from Helsinki, where they are preparing to cover tomorrow's events, are NewsHour White House correspondent Yami Shalcinder and special correspondent Ryan Chilcote. I want to start with a basic question for both of you about what the parties want. Yami, let me start with you. What does the president want from this conversation with Vladimir Putin? The president really hasn't given that much detail about what he wants from Vladimir Putin. What he said is that he wants to have this meeting, that he likes having meetings, that he wants to be around strong leaders, that he thinks it's important to have that communication be good, and that our relationship with the United States should be strong with Russia. Um, sources inside the White House tell me that they also are, were, are waiting to hear what the president is going to do. There are a lot of issues that they could talk about. Um, among them are the situation in Syria, the military situation. There's reporting that the U.S. has been offered to possibly pull out of troops if they can get a deal with Russia um, to, to, to deal with other things. There's this idea that the annexation of Crimea could be a topic, that the president could possibly recognize Crimea as part of Russia. That would be a big deal. But everyone says so far that the president doesn't have, um, doesn't want to do that. The other thing that the president said he's going to talk about is election meddling. That's a big deal, not only because of 2016, but going forward. There's this idea that the midterm elections in the United States could be hacked by Russia. So a lot of people are very worried about that. But the president it really just wants the optics. He wants to look like a strong man. And as a result, he wants to sit down with Vladimir Putin. They're going to be alone for an hour. Um, and it's going to be one on one. There are going to be translators there. But essentially, these two men are going to know are going to be the only people who knew what they said in that meeting um, one on one. And then it's, of course, going to be extended to top aides talking to them as well. Ryan Chilcote, I want to ask you the same question. What does Vladimir Putin get out of this conversation? What does he want out of it? Look, I think that uh, Vladimir Putin obviously would love it if uh, President Trump was to say that he recognizes Crimea as part, uh, an integral part of Russia. He'd love to see uh, the sanctions uh, decrease. But I think realistically, he thinks, uh, realizes that those uh, things are unlikely. Uh, the very fact that this meeting is taking place is already a, an achievement enough, I'm pretty sure, for the Russian president. If you think about it, they've been asking for this meeting ever since uh, President Trump's inauguration. And Russia really has sort of been in the cold for the last four years since the annexation of Crimea. So being here next to uh, President Trump allows President Putin to communicate to the people back at home that, yes, you know, we're paying a price for our foreign policy, for what we're doing in Crimea and Ukraine uh, and our, our relations with the West. But as you can see, they respect us. Look at them meeting with me here. President Trump, that means we are a, a superpower. Uh, we are a force to be reckoned with. And that's a very powerful and useful message for President Putin to send to his people right now after so many years of sanctions and uh, tensions with the West. Yeah, Mish, even before this meeting, before touching down, the president has sent out a series of tweets saying that uh, we, the reporters, are again an enemy of the people. And that he also, in a conversation with CBS's Jeff Glor, called uh, the EU a foe. Uh, why these sorts of comments before this conversation? Well, it's very notable what the president is talking about, the media as being an enemy of the people, while he's on his way to meet the Russian pres president who has jailed reporters. Um, something like 58 reporters have been killed in Russia since 1998. Just this year alone, in 2018, 33 reporters around the world have been killed. That's according to the Committee to Protect Journalists. So journalists are really under attack all over the world. And the president, instead of saying, I back the media, we need a free press, we are not going to treat our media like Vladimir Putin does, he goes and doubles down on Air Force One. And that's, that's really remarkable. The other thing is that President Trump, when he was a candidate, said he was going to take on on Europe, he said that he was going to take on our European allies on the campaign trail. He said that he thought that the United States was being taken advantage of. So for a lot of in a lot of ways, he's doing exactly what he said he was going to do. And as Ryan said, there are a lot of people who are very, very worried that his antagonism to Europe really plays right into Putin's hands. Ryan, let's talk a little bit about uh, how President Vladimir Putin prepares for these type of things. You've covered him for a long time. What's his modus operandi? Look, you know, he has a very long view. And as you uh, pointed out there, he's got a lot of experience. He's been in power now for 18 years. Um, so he's going to look at what can be achieved. And I think, you know, uh, President uh, Trump represents a real unique opportunity for Vladimir Putin to do something. Not at this summit. This is just the beginning of a relationship. He will appreciate the fact that this summit is taking place because President Trump agreed to have it and that that may have been at his political peril. So, you know, he's a very loyal guy if you look at how he deals with his inner circle, and he's going to want to reward him. Is he going to give him something today? I don't know. He's probably going to be a bit sensitive to the fact that 
uh, people are going to be watching this saying, oh, uh, President Trump uh, is uh, President Putin's lapdog. He's not going to want to make it look like uh, he's uh, helping him out too much. But he's going to appreciate that he needs to establish and wants to establish a long-term relationship. Look, you know, if uh, he's lucky, uh, this is the best chance he's had for a while. If President uh, Trump is in power for another seven years, yeah, and the annexation of Crimea, the sanctions, these are things that maybe wouldn't get solved this year. But just think, two, three, four, five years down the line, Vladimir Putin's still in power, and these are still problems. So he'd love to be able to work with someone to make them go away. Uh, Yamish, this is obviously in the context. Just a couple of days ago, Special Counsel Robert Mueller just indicted 12 Russian military officers, intelligence officers, of hacking into the DNC, meddling with our campaign. Um, but there seems to be a difference in how the Trump White House perceives this as not necessarily a, an attack on democracy, but really just an attack on Democrats. Well, President Trump has spoken about these indictments in a very partisan way, while members of his administration, including the, the Secretary of Homeland Security, has been saying that it was really about an attack on America. So President Trump went out there and said that the Democrats were weak, that's why they were hacked, that the Republicans were smarter, they were stronger, and because of that, they were able to not be hacked like the Democrats. So you have him really taking a partisan look at this. And then you have the Homeland Security um, Secretary saying, this is America, this is about American people, this is about American voters. And what, why this all really matters is because now we're going into a midterm election where if Democrats are targeted by Russia or others, whether or not President Trump wants to or not, it's going to be an American being attacked by a foreign country. So you're going to have to see whether or not the president will say, you know what, we need to make sure that all our elections, whether or not they're Democrats or Republicans, that all our elections, all our candidates, that they need to be safe. And that's not what he's doing right now. The, the White House statement that they put out shortly after the indictment said there's the Trump campaign specifically is not being accused of anything. So the president quickly said... I'm not, th this is not my problem. I'm not the one being, uh, being attacked here, and there's no collusion here. And that's very, very troubling for a lot of people. All right. News Hour White House correspondent Yamish Alcinder and special correspondent Ryan Chilcote, thank you both, and we'll look forward to your reporting tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.